Howdy, y'all. I mean, ciao. You probably thought we were switching over to Texas cuisine, did ya? We're sticking with Italy. We started in the north and now we're moving to central Italy and we're gonna do some recipes from Tuscany today. We're going to start with a panzanella salad, which is based with stale bread that the peasants created using leftovers. And then we're going to do Cantucci Toscana, which as we know as biscotti. So I can't wait for us to get started. Let's get started today with something lighter from Italy. We're going to do a panzanella salad. It starts with breadcrumbs, heirloom tomatoes, olives, cucumbers, light, bright colors, lots of um, nutrition in this. And actually this dish started from a peasant dish when people were trying not to waste food. So they would take their day old leftover bread that was stale and make this wonderfully tasty salad. Well, the first thing we want to do to get our panzanella salad ready is to toast our bread. The recipe sometimes calls for stale bread. There's a little bit of difference in that. Stale bread obviously is sat out. Um, it's kind of dehydrated. I like to get a little toastiness on it. It adds some flavor and it gets some crunch. So I've got a saute pan um, heating up and then we're going to add some butter. Okay, let's add a lot of butter. Some olive oil. Let that melt down, coat the pan. And then we're going to toss in our breadcrumbs. By the way, this is how you would make homemade croutons too for any other salad that you might be doing. We're going to let them sit for just a second, get a little toasty, and then we're going to want to flip them. Um, I actually am going to use a spoon to kind of move them around. I will attempt to flip, and although I am a professional chef, this is something that I didn't master, so it, there's a good chance when I do it, it might go over my shoulder. <laughs> and I've got the heat on high. You'll just wanna watch your heat. You wanna make sure you don't burn the bread. You just wanna get a nice toast on them. So our bread is just about toasted. I just want to make sure we've gotten all sides of the crumbs. And, oh, oh. Hey, I did not spill any, that's amazing. So now that these are toasted, we can make our salad and get it all put together. I like to use heirloom tomatoes for this particular salad. You get lots of different colors. It makes it very vibrant. And typically an heirloom tomato is going to come from an organic uh, farm, which makes them have more nutrients and more flavor than you would find in a conventional tomato you'd get in the grocery store. So I want to get our tomatoes cut. See the pretty colors? Yellow, that's kind of a brighter red. And then you've got the deeper red. They come in green, they come in burgundy. So first thing we wanna do is just get those sliced. Some nice big wedges work well. And there's also kind of a trick so that your salad doesn't get watery. You can sprinkle your tomatoes with salt, same thing with your cucumbers, and that'll draw some of the water out and you won't have a soggy bread salad. Plus the salt actually increases the flavor too. It brings out the flavor of the tomatoes. So I'm gonna let those sit with some salt while I do these. And I'm just cutting that top part off where the stem was. Sometimes that can be a little bit um, tough. Folks don't like that texture when they're eating a tomato. So we'll just take that part off. All right, so I've got a mixing bowl. Let's get that out of our 
away. Let's add our tomatoes. Breadcrumbs. And this is a bread salad, so you do want quite a bit of the croutons in the salad, more so than the other ingredients. We're gonna add some green and black olives. I got some heirloom uh, smaller cherry tomatoes. I like that we have some different colors and some different texture sizes in the tomatoes. Red onion. And cucumber. And this bowl is getting too small for me to mix this, so let's try to do it. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil, some red wine vinegar, and I'm gonna toss this with my hands if I can. Get that in there. Here we go, nice and mixed. And to plate it, I'm going to use a platter. We can serve this family style. You certainly could do this in individual serving bowls, but let's do a nice big family style platter. I'm gonna use some romaine lettuce, kind of as the bed for the salad. Even though romaine is not typically tossed in with a panzanella, but we've got that pretty green. We're gonna dump all this out and I'll mix it a little bit more now that it's out of the bowl. I'll toss together, isn't that beautiful? And I'm going to put a little more drizzle of olive oil. Again, some salt. Fresh black pepper. This is such a pretty salad with all those bright colors. Simple, tasty, and now let's take some basil and we will put that on top as well. That fun little chiffonade, you get them just made like ribbons. Isn't that gorgeous? And there you go, panzanella salad. Now we're going to do our second dish from Central Italy. This one's from Tuscany. And we're going to make Cantucci Toscana, which is also known as biscotti. I don't think we've ever called it Cantucci here in the States, but um, it's a cookie, dessert cookie, and I'm going to attempt to bake. Got lots of flour. I, of course, wore a black dress because I get flour all over myself, but this should be a fun recipe to do, and it's super easy. We're gonna start with our dry ingredients. So I've got our flour measured out, sugar, dry ingredients get mixed together first, some baking powder, and we just want to mix that together so it distributes evenly throughout the flour. And then we'll prep our wet ingredients. Okay, so those are mixed. For our wet ingredients, we're going to take four eggs. And I'm cracking these first before the other wet ingredients. That way, if I get any shells dropped in, I can take those out before the other ingredients go in. And y'all know that I love to use organic pasture-raised products. So these are pasture-raised eggs from pasture-raised chickens. I've got some melted butter. This is cooled. The reason we don't wanna use melted butter that just came off the stove is it'll cook these eggs. So, um, and just to be on the safe side, I'm also going to kind of stir the eggs 
as I pour this in. So you do want this cooled so we don't cook the eggs. And we're gonna add some honey. This is honey from Italy. A lot of beekeepers in Italy. And lots of different varieties of honey. This one's got a nice dark rich color. Mix those together. And now we're going to put the wet in with the dry. How am I doing with flour? Did I get anything on me yet? All right. This is where it gets dangerous because I probably will flip flour myself. <laughs> and you just want to mix this till it comes together. And you know me, I like to use my hands. So I'm going to, as this starts forming into a dough, I'm going to kind of knead it together with my hands. There we go. Mix this thin a little better. Can you see that, how it's coming together as a dough? That last little bit of flour mixed in. And now I'm gonna mix in whole almonds. These are raw almonds, not roasted, not salted. Okay, let's turn this out onto our wooden mat. This is a fun recipe if you're a kid, because look at you get it all over your hands. I don't know, as a kid I just liked <laughs> being icky gicky. All right. I'm gonna cut that in half. We're gonna make two logs. And once those are formed, we'll get them on the baking sheet and we'll put them in the oven. One try to get away. <laughs> So I've got the oven preheating at 350. And I've got my pan with parchment on it so we don't have anything sticking. All right, 350 degree oven, six to eight minutes. And these should be ready. Did I say six minutes in the oven? I was just kidding. Actually, it's gonna go in for 30 minutes. We're gonna take it out, we're gonna slice it, and then the slices go back in for 30 minutes. But the other thing that I forgot to do was put um, some egg on top of the biscotti so we get a nice golden crust. So I'm gonna do that now, and if you haven't noticed, my rolls of dough have widened, kind of like I have as I've been eating all this Italian food. So let's just give that a quick baste. We're gonna put it back in the oven. 30 minutes this time. And then when they come out, we'll slice them. We'll lay the slices back on the baking sheet and put them in for six minutes to crisp them up as slices. Perfect. Hey, it's been 30 minutes now, so let's take our biscotti out of the oven. I wish you could smell this. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay, now we want to take this off and we're gonna cut it into our slices it goes back on the baking sheet and that's what's gonna bake for six minutes. I'm always so thankful for anything I bake comes out. <laughs> Yay! All right. So we're gonna slice it.
And those slices go back on the cookie sheet. And back in the oven, six minutes. So our Cantucci Toscana Biscotti has come out of the oven and typically we think of eating biscotti with coffee or espresso. Actually in Italy they drink it with Vin Santo which is a dessert wine and I just happen to have some right here. So dip it in, let it kind of soak in. Crunchy, the wine gives it some sweet, flavorful notes. Very good. I am so glad that we got to share some recipes from Tuscany. I wish we had the Tuscan uh, landscape behind us, but at least we have, get to eat those recipes. So today, if you recall, we did the panzanella and we did biscotti or cantucci toscana. If you want those recipes, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook, but you can also find them listed at jenniferbasil.com.